tonight on the News at 7. Breaking news as we continue to learn more following a mass shooting in Las Vegas. The latest ahead. And some Auburn students looking for a new place to live after receiving an eviction notice from the city. The reason in minutes. You're watching the News at 7 on Auburn's News Leader. Good evening and welcome to Eagle Eye News at 7. I'm Brooks Childress. And I'm Alicia Richardson. 59 people have died and over 500 have been injured after a shooting the, during a Jason Aldean country music concert in Las Vegas late Sunday night. The massacre is the deadliest shooting in U.S. history. Police say that gunman Stephen Paddock killed himself after firing off hundreds of shots from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Over 10 rifles were found in Paddock's hotel room. President Trump offered condolences at a press conference Monday morning. Melania and I are praying for every American who has been hurt, wounded, or lost the ones they love so dearly in this terrible, terrible attack. We pray for the entire nation to find unity and peace, and we pray for the day when evil is banished and the innocent are safe from hatred and from fear. May God bless the souls of the lives that are lost. May God give us the grace of healing, and may God provide the grieving families with strength to carry on. Thank you. God bless America. Thank you. At the request of the President, flags have been lowered to half-mast. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey wrote in a tweet, at the request of POTUS and in memory and honor of the Las Vegas shooting victims, I've ordered flags to half staff. Let's pray for Vegas. Several Auburn students could be without places to live due to an Auburn city ordinance restricting the number of unrelated people that can live in houses in certain districts of the city. Five senior girls living in one of these districts started a change.org campaign to petition to continue living in their house. The campaign has over 9,000 signatures and dozens of comments offering support to these girls. Eagle Eye Julia Moore has more information in the newsroom. Yes, that's right. One of the girl's parents built and owned the house that is zoned in a single family area. The girls have lived there for two years and were served eviction notices last month. This is what Haley had to say about being served the eviction notice. A police and a city planner came to our house one morning at about 6.30 a.m., um, rang the doorbell, banged on the door until we came to the door, um, approached us and said they had a warrant to search the property in the house. Um, which was kind of scary, you know, you were like, they kind of treated us a little bit like criminals. They did inform us what the law was that we were um, breaking, so we knew that it wasn't anything else um, crazy. So we um, sat downstairs, um, they checked our license, um, our driver's license and all of our license plates on our cars. They took pictures of everything in our house, they went through our drawers, went through our books and Bibles. Um, it was very invasive and very, like we just felt like we were being treated as criminals and um, that we had done something illegal and done something wrong. Um, so it was very, it was kind of scary and it was just very invasive and intrusive. Now the zoning ordinance has been in place since 1982, but principal planner Tom, Tom Weintraut said it is typically only enforced when a complaint is filed. Live from the newsroom, Julie Moore, Eagle Eye News. Thank you, Julie. The girls have hired lawyers and have a court date set for October 17th. They said they will not make any further plans until that court date. Two people were shot during an early morning robbery in Opelika. The robbery occurred at 280 Marathon on Columbus Parkway. According to police, two suspects armed with firearms entered the business, demanded money, and then began shooting. One victim suffered life-threatening injuries and was airlifted to Midtown Medical Center in Columbus, Georgia. That victim's condition remains unknown. The other victim sustained non-life-threatening injuries and was transported by ambulance to East Alabama Medical Center. The suspects fled the store with an undisclosed amount of money. A third suspect drove them away in a vehicle. Tiger Transit driver Tony Patillo accused of raping an Auburn student on a transit bus is back in jail. Police arrested Patillo Saturday evening and revoked his bond. Lee County Sheriff Jay Jones said Patillo was involved in some type of action that was evident of a threat or con continuing conduct of violating the law. Patillo did not respond to calls from police and his ankle monitor did not send his location for most of the day Saturday. And once again, our thoughts and condolences 
are with the victims of the Las Vegas shooting. You're watching Eagle Eye News at 7. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis. Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. A busy weekend in Auburn sports at home as many Tiger teams return to the Plains. I'm Aaron Wise with sports. Football returned home for their first SEC home game of the season. Eagle Eye Sports' Casey Cooper has the story. The number 13 Tigers going up against the 24th ranked Bulldogs. Auburn striking first with a touchdown. Mississippi State would try to respond. No luck. If you think that was a pick six, look again. The ruling on the field was reversed and Mississippi State settled with the field goal. And from there, the Auburn offense stole the show. Auburn went on to score six more touchdowns. A beautiful pass from Stidham to Kyle Davis. Stidham showing off his arm in this game. That pass would set up carry on Johnson to go over the top for a touchdown. He had three total that night. My goal is just being better than I was the week before. And I think I was. I think I was better than the week before. Last week, I'm not sure if I would have gotten that opportunity to run that many yards. So, just got to get better. Mississippi State trying to put something up before halftime. They would go in trailing Auburn 21-10. to However, the Bulldogs could not find the spark in the second half to get the offense going. The Auburn defense kept Mississippi State out of the end zone in the entire second half. Backup quarterback Malik Willis putting the icing on the cake to finish out the game. The guys are making plays. Our receivers are growing up and, and they're making plays uh, down the field. Um, and I think that this is kind of all starting to come together. So overall, we got off to a good start. And, and we got off to a good start. Our crowd got into it. Our crowd was unbelievable. I think we had seven false starts. And I've said this before, I think this is the best home field advantage. There is in college football. Auburn is, of course, coming off a victory last week in Missouri, and the momentum just continued here tonight as Auburn defeated Mississippi State 49-10, to and Auburn is now 2-0 and in the SEC. In Auburn, Casey Cooper, Eagle Eye Sports. The Tigers will stay at home for an early kickoff in Week 6. Volleyball returned home for two SEC matches this weekend. Competition started Friday with a loss to Mizzou, but Auburn returned to the court later in the weekend. Auburn looked to redeem themselves at their home court on Sunday, August against Arkansas. The Razorbacks were able to keep the score tight throughout the game. The girls served up several kills, which put them in the place to win. In the final set of the match, Watson challenged Auburn's final point. The point was overturned and the game continued. However, the Tigers put up two points back-to-back -to, -back to win the match, which won the series. This is Auburn's sixth sweep of the season, and the win brings the Tigers to 3-1 in the SEC and 10-3 and overall. Definitely very happy. They're a very good team, and uh, you know, for us to come out, you know, I thought on Friday we were a little bit hesitant. Uh, we've talked about being more aggressive today. Uh, I thought we came out, got them on their heels, and really stuck to our game plan. Volleyball will now hit the road for a two-game road trip. To stay up to date on all your Auburn sports, go to our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, or follow us on Twitter at eetv underscore sports. We'll be right back with your weather update. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting! Oh, I'll poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Hey 
guys, my name is Kara Rhodes and let's take a look at this week's weather. So tomorrow morning when you wake up, it's going to be a little bit cooler at 65 degrees and as the day goes on, it's going to be warming up. So moving on from there, here's a look at this week's weather. So Tuesday, we've got uh, 61 degree lows and 82 degree high. And then by Saturday, it's going to be a lot warmer, 88 degrees, but still keeping in those 60s at 64 degrees for your low. Uh, moving right here at Auburn, we've got 82 degrees down south. Over to the west, we've got uh, 63 degrees with Salt Lake City, so it is getting cooler throughout the nation. And then finally, right here at home, we've got our neighbors uh, to our left and to our right. We've got Montgomery at 86 degrees, Columbus, Georgia at 84 degrees, and right here at home, it's 82 degrees in Auburn, Alabama. And that's a look at this week's weather. Just stay back, and we'll be right back after the break. Tiger Cage is a competition for Auburn students who have a pitch for a business or a product. The winner will be awarded $50,000 to start their business. So Tiger Cage is an annual entrepreneurial competition, uh, very similar to the television show Shark Tank. So it gives students here at Auburn an opportunity to um, develop and compete with their business idea to try and pull up the best pitch. Um, so that they can get money in order to continue and uh, support their business. There are three rounds in the competition. Um, there are a set of mentor opportunities beforehand, um, events that people can go to to learn more about the process of developing the business. The event will take place in the spring and you can contact Lakami Baker at l-baker at auburn.edu for more information about the competition. Heyday volunteers are selling t-shirts this week on the concourse for Auburn's annual event. Auburn's longtime tradition, Heyday, will be taking place this Wednesday, October 4th, all over campus. Volunteers will be creating name tags, selling t-shirts, and spreading the Auburn spirit. Heyday will also be accompanied by entertainment and food on the campus green, serving hay dogs to those who stop by. T-shirts are, are $15 and will be sold all day Tuesday and throughout Wednesday's event. Thursday night's pep rally cheered on the Tigers as they headed into Saturday's big game against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. On Thursday night, a pep rally was held for the Auburn Tigers as the football team geared up to face the Mississippi State Bulldogs for the first home SEC game. SGA President Jacqueline Keck joined the senior football players and Coach Malzahn to say a few words to get fans excited for Saturday's game. The Auburn University Band performed with the Tiger Paws and Cheerleaders, playing some of Auburn's most classic fight songs, including Bodigeta and Trackum. Auburn University faculty, students, and members of the community all came out to cheer on the Tigers and hang out with Aubie. And on Saturday, Auburn defeated the Bulldogs 49-10. to Governor Kay Ivey will visit Auburn Tuesday and open a new first-class pre-K classroom. Ivey will participate in the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the classroom designed to serve 18 children. The classroom is located in the Auburn Housing Authority Complex. Following the 10 a.m. event, Ivey will take a tour of the classroom. Two Auburn graduates will be featured on Survivor this season. Allie Elliott and Patrick Bolton both graduated from Auburn in 2014 and were even neighbors and casual friends. Bolton still lives in Auburn as, and is in a co-owner of a moving company he started in college with his brother. Elliott now works in Hollywood as an assistant to YouTube star Glozell. Show producer Matt Bagwagonen told Hollywood Reporter that casting both of them was completely unplanned and saying it is one of those weird small world things that would never think would happen. Survivor airs Wednesdays at 7. Here's a look at what's coming up this week. We'll be back in a minute. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. To 
discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. On Saturday, Buddy Davidson will attend his 700th straight Auburn University football game. His streak started back in 1957, his freshman year at Auburn as a student manager of the team. Buddy has seen 61 seasons, 8 coaches, 36 quarterbacks, and on Saturday, 700 games. Buddy has decided that his 700th game against Ole Miss will be his last. That's an impressive record. I can't think of going to 700 football games in a row. Yes, that's a lot. You mean a lot of people during that time. Oh, yeah. I consider myself a huge Auburn football fan. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere near that number. Yes, me too. If you would like to join the conversation, please use the hashtag Eagle Eye TV on Instagram and Twitter. That's all that we have for you tonight. Tune in after the show for a live look in the SGA Senate meeting. Check out our website, eagleeye-auburn.com, for all of the latest Auburn news throughout the week and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Eagle Eye TV. I'm Alicia Richardson. And I'm Brooks Childress. Thanks for joining us and War Eagle.